and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the books and I hope you're all doing very very well. Today is the second part of me talking about all the books that I've read in April. I've read 21 books in April. Now that is impressive. I At the beginning of the month, I was doing so well, I was actually getting through a book a day and I was like, oh, do you think I could manage a book a day in April? So I sort of not made it my plan, but I was like, oh, that's an interesting target to meet. And I've done 21, which is amazing. So if you want to watch my review of the first 10 books that I read in April, I will link that down below. This is the last 11 books that I have read in April. And the first book, that I read in the second half, because we may as well just get straight on with it, is What White People Can Do Next from Allyship to Coalition by Emma Dabry. A little short slither of a book um, written by Emma Dabry, who is the writer of one of my favourite non-fiction books called um, Don't Touch My Hair, which is black history told through um, black people's hair. Super original way to look at black history. So interesting and sort of, um, I guess the, the right level of academic for me, because one thing I will say about this book is that this was too academic for me and there was parts in it which were just sort of whew, right over my head and um but but also based on i've read don't touch my hair twice now the first time i read it and then the second time because we we did it for um uh patreon book club this year i listened to the audiobook of it and i feel like i got more out of it the second time around and i'm hoping that this will be the case with this because there is also like uh, it's just because it was too academic for me um I was still well aware of like the really thought provoking um, uh, stuff that was dealt with in here as well as it being like really hard hitting facts and things like that. So yeah, I will get to this again. I was actually, and, and I'll talk about this because this is the last book I read in April, um, but reading these at the same time, so this one by Emma Dabry and then Me and White Supremacy, How to Recognise Your Privilege, Combat Racism and Chase the World, uh, Change the World by Leila F. Saad. Um, very interesting to read these two together um and very sort of um well sort of like enlightening it probably isn't the right word but like oh, i can't think of the word maybe like just like you just have to have a really good look at yourself when i was reading both of these and this was the what i read in the, the this is what i read first so yeah interesting right but anyway less confusing thoughts um are um the next book i read which i gave five stars and that's hungry by grace dent this is a memoir um from grace now grace is a journalist and a food critic in the uk um she appears on telly on the regs um normally on master chef um and uh, but other food programs and, and and other programs in general um and this is her memoir and um as her job now is um a food critic it is unsurprising that there is a hell of a lot of food mentioned in here and i love food fiction and I love food non-fiction so reading this was lovely and the food nostalgia in here was just so beautiful it was built up so Grace is slightly older than me I think maybe like eight or nine years older than me but her sort of like childhood of um working men's clubs and uh, social gatherings with grandparents and things like that the the, the the alignment in that in terms of nostalgia and comfort was just so perfect and it really really built like this sort of big pile of sentimentality every single thing i was learning about her family and her dad and her this and like family secrets and things like that it's just building this massive tower where by the end i was an absolute wreck <laughs> reading the end of it so i've always loved grace Dent, but this just made me love her even more and her writing just clicked something in me and i just like i just bonded with this book so much which was such a treat now what i will say is that there is um a trigger warning for dementia and cancer and also just some of the sort of most heartfelt sadness in living with somebody with dementia and trying to get a diagnosis of that dementia and trying to work out what the best care plan for that person that you love who is now um not their former selves um and that is all that is sort of peppered throughout the book but comes to a head at the end which is also what i said about the sort of like the nostalgia and the sentimentality that's building towards this massive um event at the end but yeah i just loved everything about it and particularly sort of grace's fake it till you make it attitude and her confidence i just just thought it was great and yeah just the food nostalgia throughout this just a joy and a lot of people have said to me oh the audiobook of this is amazing because grace does it so i'm going to be revisiting this and i'm going to be listening to it 
when Grace does it. So yeah, I thought it was absolutely amazing. Five stars. Uh, the next book I gave three stars, and that is Clara and the Sun by Kashu Ishiguro. Um, this is a proof copy, so other copies may look differently, but it was very exciting to receive this proof copy. So this for me was a book of two halves because the slow bit, I'll tell you what it's about. I'll tell you what it's about. It's about a young girl called Josie and her artificial friend, Clara. Um, the, the title Clara and the Sun refers to the fact that Clara is um, partially uh, solar powered and looks at the sun as a, um, a giver of nourishment. Um, now the first half of the book, when Clara is in the store where um, the artificial friends are bought and um, sort of viewing people coming in and buying other artificial friends, and, and Clara not getting uh, bored and then Clara being in the front window and being able to see things in the street and things like that and then Clara meeting Josie and getting to know Josie and Josie eventually buying her loved that loved it and was like this is so great really really enjoyed it I'm holding the book here like I read it but I actually listened to the audiobook of it um and loved it but then sort of halfway through like the, the plot sort of kicks in I guess because I enjoyed the sort of slow um listening to them getting to know each other and things like that and then halfway through the sort of plot kicks in and it sort of lost it for me to be honest and, and lost a bit of the the specialness that I felt going on so yeah I ended up giving this a three star um so yeah bit bit disappointed could have just done with um a whole a whole series uh, a whole book about clara being in the store and meeting josie i just really love those bits um the next book is a book that i i read on my e-reader i got it out from the library um and this is the outrun by amy liptrot um, which i'd had on my radar for a while but actually this year i got to it because um i read it as one of my reading women challenges so um one of the challenges on the reading women challenge is um to read a book about the natural world so this was uh, a memoir by amy liptrot and and um, yeah, it's about Amy. So what I didn't realise it was going to be about is that it's about the natural world in that Amy um, is living on um, a small island in the... I want to say the Outer Hebrides, but I don't think it is. A small island in Scotland. Why don't I know whereabouts specifically it was? Um, called... Pape, she's been brought up on Pape and now she's living on Westray, so two, two small islands um, and she's working for the RSPB and there's a lot of nature writing in there which is beautiful but there's also um, a lot in there about her addiction and getting over her addiction and what it's like getting over your addiction living in a really rural um, isolated place um, and yeah her life was sort of too like has gone from like one extreme of living in this small island with her mother and all of that and then going to live in London and becoming addicted to, to alcohol and then sort of returning to Scotland and these small islands. Um, I spent a lot of time googling islands off of the coast of Scotland um, and I really enjoyed all of that and seeing sort of like the even like a small island of like which have got 70 people living on it they'll have like three churches and stuff like that. Do I think I could live on an island with 70 other people on there? Like honestly yeah i think i could um i think she's quite fortunate in that like the internet connection was quite good there and that that sort of connects you to the outside world but yeah there was lots of um yeah just lots of like lovely like i said lovely nature writing um like interesting bits about addiction and a battle of overcoming addiction um like cute little bits about community life um in, in a small community and i guess like that community is stronger is that you can live in london with like thousands of people around you and feel quite lonely and whereas then you go and live on an isolated island with a community of 70 and feel like you're at the heart of a community so yeah i really enjoyed that i've since started following amy on instagram and it looks as though she's got another book coming out so i'm looking forward to to, to reading that because i really enjoyed the sort of everything about it really i gave it four stars uh next up was my beijing by ni young um this was a uh, a graphic novel it says it's a graphic novel but like sort of like graphic novel come picture book um of four stories told from a girl's point of view and um that heavily involve her grandfather and their lives um it's sort of like that the illustrations were very 
green i thought there was always some sort of like lush green trees and things like that and it was a it was a joy to read i think i sat and read it in one sitting really um and yeah it was lovely and colorful um the illustrations were really nice and it was nice to see a sort of like little insight into there um will it remain one of my favorites for forevermore i don't think so but i, I got I, I quite enjoyed it It was quite a nice little um thing to read uh and my favorite story i think was bug bug hotel or bug paradise um yeah which was lovely but yeah there was a sort of dreaminess about it but enjoyed it three stars uh and then next up was grown by tiffany d jackson um and uh read this on my uh on my e-reader as well now Tiffany D. Jackson, I've read another book of hers um, called Monday's Not Coming, and these are YA books, but what I will say about her is that she does not shy away from hard-hitting content and hard-hitting subjects, and sort of just like, just doesn't shy away from like the grittiness of those, particularly for a YA audience, because maybe not so much in Grown, but definitely in Monday's Not Coming, um, I, there was bits in there which, and, and that book in particular focuses on child neglect and child abuse, um, that I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that this is, like, I was shocked to be reading it in any book, let alone a YA book. So this, um, this book covers a pop star, um, grooming and abusing an underage girl, um, who he is, um, sort of, he, he's managed to sort of, as I say, groom her into thinking that she's, um, a big part of his life and he loves her and he's going to look after her and he's, he's doing all these things for her career and things like that. And, um, and, and abusing her so yeah it, it deals with that and then yeah it, it sort of but what I will say about both of these books is that at the end the plot sort of really ramps up at the end and in both Grown and Monday's Not Coming I was left quite confused about the actual events because I don't know and I don't think I was reading it super quick or anything like that because I remember thinking that after I'd read Monday's Not Coming but towards the end I'm just like oh god like there's so much going on like what's actually going on and maybe there's a lot of stuff alluded to which I don't necessarily love in a book anyway but particularly like in a in a in a YA book where I want I want answers I guess I want answers so yeah I, I will I, I feel like I feel unfair because I've I've given these books so I gave grown two stars I might even have given Monday's not coming two stars but I will I would still read anything that Tiffany D Jackson bought out so yeah how does that work I've really been having a good old think about star ratings this year and I just don't know how I feel about them anymore but yeah onwards we go um next up was um a book that I actually do have I think I'm actually giving it away so I I, I own the book of this I bought the book of this but I ended up listening to this on an audiobook and um I listened to this because um this book was uh long listed for the women's prize for fiction that book if I leave you in suspense any longer was nothing but blue sky by Kathleen McMahon um gave this two stars and just sort of felt a bit fe it fell a bit flat with me um if you've watched any of my um videos about the women's prize you'll see my thoughts on on that with it this book was sort of I, I feel like the blurb promised a little bit to me and it sort of said um after so you're following david after his wife mary rose has died and in the blurb it says like david looking back on his life with mary rose is looking to see that maybe mary rose wasn't the person that he thought she was and maybe their marriage wasn't what he thought it was etc etc so i thought this was going to be like revelation city and it wasn't it was just sort of like a sad miserable man looking back at his sad miserable marriage and me thinking bloody hell mary rose could have done a lot better than him so yeah it just it just didn't really do anything for me and i found it a bit of a yawn fest um it did pick up a little bit towards the end there is one revelation i guess that happens towards the end but mainly david was a prick and it was all a bit dull not you david He's got his headphones in, he doesn't know what I'm talking about. Next book though, hurrah, uh, was Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Again on the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. Um, and also we read this for my Patreon book club. Now we had such a ball reading this for my Patreon book club. And um, the discussion of this was probably one of my favourite discussions we've ever had. Um, I don't often plug the old Patreon book club, but I will link all the details down below. If you'd like to join a book club um, on Patreon, it's $5 a month and for that $5, um, you get to vote in a poll where you get to pick um, a book that we're going to be reading. There's a different genre every month. Um, we've already selected the um, 
the book for May because it's a little women retelling but I've just announced that the genre for June is Japanese fiction and the so this would probably be quite a good time to join because it means you can vote in the poll that's coming up at the beginning of June uh, at the beginning of May for our June read um yeah so you get to vote in there there's a mid-month check-in video which is just a video like this where I've talked about my initial thoughts on the book and then the last Sunday of the month there is an hour live um YouTube live show where we just talk about the book I read out questions and give my answers and then you guys talk amongst yourselves in the the comments and give your answers back I read out all the comments and it was just I, I love doing it I look forward to it every single month but this month in particular God, it was just one of the most enlightening and enjoyable chats I've had about a book in a really really long time now I think partly due to the fact that I really really enjoyed this book and I feel like it was a real roller coaster for me in terms of like just being on this journey with these characters so the book itself um follows um three um three people Reese who is a trans woman um her ex-partner Ames who when Reese was in a relationship with Ames um Ames was a trans woman named Amy Amy detransitioned to become Ames and Ames has now got his co-worker and actual boss Katrina pregnant so it's these three characters you're following with the majority focus on Ames and Reese and sort of go back into um Amy and Reese's relationship and when they first met and things like that so yeah there's lots going on here and the 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 the, 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 the main plot that runs throughout is that Ames has got Katrina pregnant and they are looking at bringing up this child um, with involvement from Reese, um, who has always wanted to be a mother. Uh, now, I did have problems with the beginning of this book because, like, Re uh, Ames just sort of makes the decision without even talking to Katrina that, yeah, it would be great to get Reese involved. <laughs> And, and like Reese has never even um, Katrina's never even met Reese or anything like that. So there was points of it I was like, what? But yeah, as as a whole, I really really enjoyed this. And yeah, I it it, it and I, I sort of come to this realization when we were talking about this in Patreon book club. I was reading this like little doors in my head were being opened, and like I was finding out things that I that, that views that I had that I didn't even know I had, and like just yeah, there was just so much going on, and like I said, a real roller coaster, and not in terms of like high highs and low lows, just like a whole journey, and yeah, it was really like there's just so much going on in here and just when I thought the book was about sort of confusion and family I then find myself that it wasn't it was about kindness and belonging and and picking your own family and yeah also just sort of so witty and humorous in its delivery and writing and yeah I really really learned a lot and I really feel like people should read it and I it, it, it should definitely have been on the shortlist and when I reviewed this I was like I'll be surprised if this isn't on the shortlist when I was making when I did the video talking about what I thought was gonna be on the shortlist I couldn't believe this hasn't made the shortlist so disappointed for that but yeah really 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 great book and really 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 great discussion and as I said I'll link all the details to patreon book club if you would like to join below so that was that and then now the next book I read um I'm not going to go into too much detail about because there is a video coming up about this and it's when no one is watching by Alyssa Cole um and David and I did our first buddy read um I read this and David listened to the audiobook of it and we yeah um, and we we read a certain amount of chapters every day and then at the end of the day we discussed what happened in the chapter so it's a very plot spoilery video but if you want to watch a video of me and David like discussing a book every night we had a great time reading it together and a great time discussion, discussing it. Um, but yeah, so this is a book about gentrification of a Brooklyn neighbourhood. Um, and you're following uh, two perspectives. Um, Sydney, who has lived in uh, one of these brownstone, uh, brownstone houses her whole life and her mother lived in them before them. And um, Theo, who is a white guy who's just moved into one of the, um, the houses with his partner. Um, and yeah, there's just all sort of like... like shit going down people going missing really builds the paranoia and the suspicion very very well because to begin with you're like oh is that a bit weird and then oh god that feels off oh are people actually going missing and then the end just sort of descended into fucking chaos and was almost like a hollywood like feel like just a shootout film like it was just yeah i really I, we got a lot of we got a lot of joy out of it i gave it three stars um I, would I read something else by Alyssa Cole? I don't know, but I thought it was an interesting thriller. And also what I will say, because I won't say there weren't, there was no violence towards women in this book because there was violence towards women 
in this book but not because they were women like um and it was interesting to read a thriller which wasn't based on a rape or the murder of a young girl or a woman being abducted or something like that so yeah it was great to read a thriller that wasn't about that um and yeah uh, the video for this will be up soon so i've probably said more than i planned to anyway but yeah david and i um buddy read this buddy read this and uh, there'll be a video going up of that uh, and then an another little book I read, um, the penultimate book, um, is Hansel and Greta by Jeanette Winterson. Um, this is one of the fairy tale revolution books that I got out from my library when I went and did a browse of my library a couple of weeks ago, which was lovely. Um, and this is a retelling of Hansel and Gretel. Um, and yeah, it's by Jeanette Winterson. Now, I find Jeanette Winterson's um, writing very warming and very comforting. Um, one of my, something that I go back to every year is um, her... A selection of short stories and recipes um called christmas days which is a book that i read like on the run up to christmas um every year and she actually narrates part of the audiobook as well so that's like even more lovely um but yeah her warmth definitely shines through here and this is a sort of modern retelling in that there's a lot in there about environment but something i did sort of feel a bit disappointed with is that I feel like the the gluttony of the villain and the sort of like the fact that they're into eating food I feel like that wasn't it wasn't my favourite thing to read about. I didn't know there was certain there were certain moments where I was a bit like, oh, set my teeth on edge a little bit about that. But yeah, I thought in general it was warming and fun in the way a fairy tale was. And I've actually um, reserved the other three in the series from the library. Um, there's. Uh, Cinderella Liberator by um, Rebecca Solnit, Blue Blood by Mallory Blackman, and I don't know if it's just called The Ugly Duckling by Camilla Shamsey, but a retelling of The Ugly Ugly Duckling written by Camilla Shamsey. So yeah, these are really fun. And also, what I will say is that they're for slightly. <laughs> I didn't make this very clear, but like, they're for. There's not. It's not. Although it's a board book, and I thought it's going to be heavily relying on pictures. It's not. It is quite wordy. Um, so yeah, it's probably one that you'd read with like older younger readers i don't know how that or, or you'd read aloud um but yeah still delivers on the sort of creepy front in terms of um, hansel and gretel um and then the last book i read oh yeah i've, I've sort of semi mentioned it already um this is me and white supremacy by layla f side um and this was a book that i read throughout the month so this is a book um an activity book really which is split into days uh, daily chapters um where you um look at uh, an aspect of white supremacy so for example I've opened on um, day four you and white silence uh, day 12 you and racist stereotypes and it gives you um, information about that and then it gives you at the end of every um, day it gives you reflective journaling prompts so um, you are encouraged to do the work in this book um, it does say to try and do it within 28 days but if you need longer than to to, to leave it for longer and to, to, to make the work doing I didn't do it every I did all the work but some days I would do like three or four days if I knew I wasn't gonna be able to do a next day or or if I hadn't done the day before it etc um, and it was a really tough one to give star rating for this because this book made me feel so uncomfortable because one of the main things it made me feel uncomfortable about this is quite sort of open like open of me to say but like I guess I'd always considered myself a a good white person and like I don't think I'd realised the, the the danger uh, and the the harm I was doing by considering myself um, a good white person and then when I looked more into my behaviour definitely as somebody who isn't racist and I can like there's, there's no there's no part of me that thinks I'm racist but I'm definitely not anti-racist enough. I'm not calling out people. Um, one of my problems is white silence. Um, if somebody, particularly friends or family, say something racist, I challenge them half-heartedly, maybe. Sometimes strongly, but half-heartedly. But if um, that person is older and set in their ways, I tend to give up. And like that's a, that's a privilege um, as a white person to be able to give that up uh, to give up and just think oh well they're, they're, they don't I, I can't be bothered I can't be bothered to deal with that like yeah th there's a lot I had to I had to really look at myself a lot in here and like I said a lot of it was uncomfortable and a lot of it was unhappy and it unearthed sort of aspects of my white superiority and exceptionalism that I didn't even know I had um but the work is ongoing and what I will what I will I'll, I'll read out two parts from right at the very end so this is like um bits that I've really found 
interesting and also things that will stay with me because the work is ongoing and it says here um all the learning and aha moments in the world do not mean anything if they're not follow through with committed action for change and that's a greatly placed sentence at the end of the book because i did have lots of learning throughout this and i did have lots of aha moments but if i don't apply them to my everyday then what's the point full stop and then also another bit that i found heartening and let me tell you there wasn't much sort of heartening points in this book for me is um it says uh the person inside you who came to this book with questions about dismantling white supremacy and who leaves this book knowing that you are part of the problem and that you are simultaneously also part of the answer there is a great power and responsibility in that knowledge but knowledge without action is meaningless so yeah there's lots of this and like I'm really, really pleased I, I got round to it, but like what I put in my Instagram review is that I bought this book at the height of the Black Lives Matters um, protests last year and I bought a, a lot of um, books about white supremacy and um, black history and black voices and things. And this, this, and I think maybe one other, I think the other one is, oh God, sorry. Um, so you want to talk about race. So that one I know I bought at the same time. They've just been sat on my shelf doing nothing. So you've got to do the work, guys. And I I, I, I feel like I've taught myself that now. And I know it's not just a, a one-stop job, read the book, I've solved it. <laughs> there's, there's stuff going on. But yeah, I gave it four stars, but it was difficult. It was difficult. But there's much more difficult stuff going on than me just having to read a book about white supremacy. But that's it for all the books that I've read in April. I'm talking really fast because my camera's about to die at any moment. And I've still got to do the um, the thumbnail. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know how you got on with your reading in April. Um, in May, I'm going to be reading all books which are um, uh, in inspired or retellings of little women so the uh, the tbr for that will be coming up soon really looking forward to that and yeah i'll see you all again soon for another booktube video better pose for my thumbnail now before my camera runs out bye